President Biden spoke out in support of workers' rights to unionize in a big way earlier this week. Let's watch. That's what unions are about, in my view, about providing dignity and respect for people who bust their neck. That's why I created the White House Task Force on Worker Organization and Empowerment to make sure the choice to join a union belongs to workers alone. And by the way, By the way, Amazon, here we come. Watch. Watch. Well, it's why I've called on Congress to finally pass the PRO Act and yeah. send it to my desk. Biden coming in hot there. While workers' <laughs> choice to form Amazon's first union last weekend shifted the momentum against the retail giant in the most meaningful way maybe ever, new reporting from The Lever reveals that one major big tech lobbying group is now going to bat for the retailer, dropping a new multi-million dollar ad campaign targeting Congress efforts to regulate Amazon. The legislation in question would shut down retailers like Amazon's ability to favor their own products over other sellers. With broken supply chains and lives disrupted, businesses like Amazon have invested to deliver on time for you and help hundreds of thousands of small businesses gain access to millions of online shoppers. But Washington politicians have a law that could break Prime's guaranteed two-day free delivery and threaten our fragile economic recovery. Tell your senators, don't break our Prime. Oppose us 2992. Paid for by CCIA. Founder of The Lever, former senior advisor to the Sanders campaign and contributing editor at Jacobin, David Sirota, joins us now to discuss. Welcome, David. Thanks for having me. Yep. And as a Washingtonian, I can confirm that that ad campaign is plastered around here. You're, you, you see it an, an awful lot. So what, what, is, what is behind this? What, you know, what, is, what is this claim that they're going to break prime? <laughs> well, the legislation in question is about whether... Uh, uh, sellers, third parties on these platforms uh, should be able to be treated equally uh, to the seller's own brands themselves. So when you go on to Amazon Prime or when you go onto a Google platform or an Apple platform, uh, and you, let's say you're a small business, you want to be treated uh, equitably in terms of placement, in terms of uh, fees, in terms of all sorts of uh, those things. You want to be treated the same way that those platforms, that their own in-house brands are treated. Otherwise, you're on an unlevel playing field. So the legislation in question would es essentially uh, try to create that. It would, it would essentially regulate that and say to these platforms like Amazon, you have to treat everyone essentially equally. You can't preference your own uh, brands, your own products uh, in a way that, that essentially rigs the marketplace. So what Amazon is responding by doing uh, is is saying that if if we do this, if uh, third parties, if small businesses get treated equally on our platform, it will somehow collapse the entire Amazon Prime system. So they're making a very um, they're trying to portray uh, their position uh, as an oligopoly, as a monopoly, as pro consumer, which of course comports with the way uh, antitrust has been looked at uh, for the last 40, 50 years. The idea being that uh, th there's been a kind of a shift in the way regulators have looked at antitrust to say, well, if a monopoly or an oligopoly uh, supposedly serves the interests of consumers, then there's no real problem. There's no real need for antitrust. Uh, but 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 what Amazon and that's what the essentially the argument Amazon's making, that if there is any antitrust enforcement here, that people who like their Amazon Prime uh, will lose out on what they like. Well, and David, though, I would make a and, you know, maybe that who knows if that's true or not. I could understand Amazon, you know, inflating the claim to scare people out of supporting this legislation. But I mean, I have to say it, it's not it is Amazon's store. Right. So they're going to just the same way that in Costco, there might be preference for the Kirkland brand. You know, there, there's no there, you know, wars are fought over shelf space in uh, in traditional um, uh, re retailers, grocery. How is this like any different from that kind of thing? 
Well, because of because of Amazon's size and because of the the platform size. I mean, we're not talking about one uh, small website here. We're talking about uh, the largest online retailer in in the country, if not in the world. Uh, and that means that it effectively is. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it is the online retail economy. So that's a, a situation where the basic rules of competition uh, should, in my view, should apply in a way where people coming into that economy are able to be treated at, in a very rough sense. Uh, they're able to be treated fairly. Otherwise, you get all sorts of potential for abuse, for manipulation. And we've heard that. I mean, you know, there's been plenty of evidence that that third party sellers, small businesses uh, are, are essentially being abused by Amazon's market share uh, in this. And so so look. Amazon is trying to scare people, uh, and ultimately, it's going to be a question of whether uh, Congress gets scared out of doing uh, this bipartisan legislation. Can you well, explain? Another, but just, another issue, oh, like I've, I just looked it up. I mean, Amazon is. It, it might work because people do like Amazon. <laughs> they like it the way it is. Amazon is much more popular than Congress. More popular than Joe Biden. It's. I think it's more popular, <laughs> as a, according to. This is more popular than any institution there is except the U.S. military. So, oh, you know, taking on this, like, what? what, yeah, what? I mean, Amazon's been smart about the way that they've branded sure. themselves. It's not just that they've been smart. Yeah. They, they, de they deliver to millions of people stuff they want easily and cheaply. By extracting, and, the con and Congress right. ha is deciding, yeah, there's something nefarious and wrong about this. We have to get involved. Right, but by crushing and extracting. Go David, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, right, by crushing and extracting profits from small businesses. So I think what's interesting about this battle is that you hear a lot of rhetoric in Congress, uh, from especially from conservatives, about how important small business is to uh, the American economy, to the American ethos. Uh, and so this is a situation in which small business uh, and enormous business, the biggest of big business, are in a huge battle. And yes, you're right, Amazon has, has marketed itself in a very shrewd fashion. I don't know how this battle is going to play out in the sense of, you're right, that when Amazon says uh, people aren't going to get their Prime or they're not going to get the Amazon Prime services that they like, ultimately, I don't know where the public is going to come down on that, right? But but I, I would say this, that if we want to live in a world where Amazon controls literally everything and there really aren't any independent small businesses because they're all essentially clients of Amazon, that's the world we're moving towards. And there's a lot of downsides to that. There's a lot of downsides for innovation. There's a lot of downsides for creativity, a lot of downsides uh, for local economies. And I think that's why Congress is in this fight. And so, you know, yeah. one, one thing that ha go ahead, Cam, sorry. Well, I was just going to mention that, you know, one thing to Robbie's um, kind of counterpoint to this is about uh, stores having shelf space and whatnot. But the difference with Amazon, I think, is that, you know, OK, so if I go to, let's say, Walmart or Target's website, um, I know that those are box stores that actually do carry products in those stores. And I'm looking for products within those stores. But Amazon, I think, built itself as a platform that aggregated uh, outside vendors. So it acts more as like a like an open air market, not a not a retailer that gets to select and curate products as much as being like a search engine for products. And I think that's how it originally sort of like you can sign up and put your stuff on on uh, on their website as to, to, and Kim, you know, Kim, that is a, a really yeah. it is a really important point that you're making in this sense that we have chosen and decided as a, as a society that we will uh, regulate uh, the exchanges and markets in the economy. As an example, the stock market. Uh, as right. an example, the commodities market. So if we see, because we basically said these are open air markets, open air, they're whole economies. And that the government has to actually at least enforce some of the most minimal and basic rules of commerce on the in those giant, enormous economies. I think that's the theory here. Yeah, yeah and the, like the New York Stock Exchange is a good example. That's a private company. And in fact, the wife of the owner of it uh, was the George Senate was the Georgia senator uh, who was involved in the insider trading scene? Well, but it would there, be as there's if, a lot of nefarious behavior there. Right? Okay, yeah. Right, but it would but be you as if some the, harm. It would so be you as if the New York Stock regulation. It would be as if the New York Stock Exchange, the company itself, could front run in the market, right. and could have That's its right. own like in, in, interventions 
in the market to profit for itself. Because what Amazon does is it sees, oh, this Burt's Bees thing you know, is doing extremely well on our platform. Here's Amazon Burt Bees. And they suppress when you try to find the actual Burt Bees, whatever. Right. And, and they put all of the Amazon product in front of you and they disguise it so well, you I mean, can't really tell that it's an Amazon product. If they're violating some copyright, they can be you know, prosecuted well, for that. But if they're, it, if they're ripping off... Right, we have strong oh, that's, I mean, it's essentially them using but... it's it's them using their position as the market right. maker to essentially rig the market. And right. look, ultimately, it does come down to a question of philo philosophy and ideology. Do you think markets should be rigged or do you think it's better when markets are an equal playing field uh, for all participants? And I think the legislation is trying to say uh, it, the latter is better. And Amazon is trying to say if we do the latter, uh, it will break the thing that, that Americans like. And, and ultimately, how this plays out, uh, that's what the battle is over. I think if human be need doing... is being well met efficiently and cheaply by a company that most people like and use and value, the government does not necessarily need to get involved. That's my Well, that's, that's true if I if I selected Amazon Burt's Bees over Burt's Bees every single time, right? And a lot of people do that. But that, so that would be fair if I purchased it over and over and over again, I suppose, and it became a popular item. But if it's not popular on its own and it's just force fed down my throat, like mainstream news, you know, they make something popular, whether I like or, or, or the music industry does it all the time. They'll run a record over and over and over again just to get you to like it. You'll eventually like it if you hear it enough. You yeah. know, it's like country music. I finally eventually started liking it after I was force fed it all the time. Right? Yeah. So that's that's how that works. I mean, if you're seeing something in front of your face nonstop. But David, I'm, I'm curious if this is if there's any plan to have this same sort of legislation or maybe I'm maybe I, I am not aware of something similar for this for like Google, for example, and suppression of search engine results. You know, it I, seems I, similar. I, 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 I mean, Google and Apple are part of the coalition or part of the front group uh, that has been uh, trying to kill this legislation. There are implications for all of, of these platforms, uh, whether it's slippery slope, meaning they're afraid that the next step will be a regulation of them. I mean, this is ultimately the crux of the new antitrust movement that's happening that they're trying to stop. Right, yeah. like the App Store stuff where they take 30 percent from every app. Yeah, they're going exactly. after right. anyway, David, yeah, great, great reporting. Interesting conversation. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to all of you. And we'll have more Rising right after this.